Everybody wants to be liked by everybody else. That's just a fact. And nobody wants to be discriminated against. Unfortunately, in the world of sports betting, it's not always easy to be liked by the sports books. And in some instances, they can even hate you so much that they actually discriminate against you. I know that sounds harsh, but don't worry. In this video, I'm going to give you three different things that you can do to make sure that you're liked by every sports book you frequent. In fact, you'll probably even be loved, which is even better than being liked. But more importantly, you'll never feel the wrath of sports betting limits, which is what books use to discriminate against people they hate. They're real and they suck. But again, don't worry. I'll tell you how to avoid them. But before we get to any of that, do yourself a favor and subscribe to this channel. We post educational videos just like this one all the time always. We also do pick videos and we go live Monday through Friday using the Plus EV tool at Odds Jam. A lot of people say that this is the greatest sports betting channel in the history of sports betting channels. I'm not going to go that far, but it is pretty sweet. So I bet you're wondering, what the hell are sportsbook limits? It may surprise you to know this, but sportsbooks can legit limit how much you're allowed to bet. For example, look at this sweet, sweet Arkansas State minus five and a half first half bet at BetMGM. I just flat bet $100 on every bet I make, so I'll just go to BetMGM, I'll enter $100 in the stake box, and then I'll hit place bet almost every time, no matter what market. NFL game, small school basketball game, NBA player prop, you name it, the blue screen of death appears. It says, your requested bet is over the allowed limit. The maximum stake has been adjusted below for you to resubmit your bet. In this case, it's $30.99. That's a far cry from the $100 I wanted to bet, but that's what being limited is all about. It doesn't feel good. You're like, you want some of this sports book? And they're like, no. It happens, and it's important to note that almost every retail book in the United States limits winners. This isn't just a BetMGM thing. I just used them for this example. DraftKings, FanDuel, ESPN Bet, Fanatics, you name it they limit winners. I will say that Caesars is pretty good about the limiting thing, so shout out to those guys for that. You're awesome. The obvious question is this, how do we avoid being limited? The answer is tricky. First, you have to know why you're being limited. A lot of people think arbitrage betting or picking off stale lines are going to get you limited, but in all seriousness, it's winning that gets you limited. If you win, you get limited, period. Remember that BetMGM commercial for the Super Bowl with Tom Brady and Vince Vaughn? BetMGM is for everyone that loves sports betting. Everyone but Tom Brady. Wait, what did I do? The truth is you've won too much, Tommy. Let others have their turn. That's real. They don't want winners. That's the way they say, hey, we don't want winners. Now, obviously, you're not going to try and purposely lose money, but you can try to blend into the crowd of losers that the sports books want hanging out their shop. The number one way to do it is bet parlays. Sports books love people that bet parlays. In fact, sports books give more bonuses to the parlay people. That's right. The more parlays you bet, the more bonuses that the books are going to give you. What's even better is you can use those bonuses to bet more parlays. It's a classic win-win situation. If you don't know what a parlay is, it's simple. It's a single bet that links together two or more single bets. For example, let's say you know for a fact Villanova is going to beat Butler by way more than six points. Sure, it would be nice to bet that by itself, but the price is only minus 115. That's not going to get you in good with the books. Winners walk up and bet single games just like that all the time. What you want to do is throw in Tennessee minus 12, which boosts the price all the way up to plus 260. Now, you look like a moron, and sportsbooks love that. You can obviously have a mathematical edge on both games, but the books are going to give you moron credit just for betting the parlay. That's people helping people right there. But if you really want to get in good, don't stop at two legs. The more bets you add to the parlay, the more the payout is when it wins, and the more the books are going to want you hanging around their place. Small dollars to win big dollars. That's the ticket. Parlay guys always say, if you can pick one game right, you can pick four. And in this example, if you just add Michigan State minus nine and a half and Texas A&M minus ten and a half, then the odds get boosted all the way up to plus 1181. That would turn $100 into $1,281 according to Parlay Math. That's like a week's worth of groceries in New Jersey. So not only will you have a shot at feeding yourself, you'll also be getting in good with the sports books like real good. And keep in mind, you don't have to stop at four legs. In fact, the more legs you add, the better the payout and the more the sports books are going to like you. The next way to get sports books to like you is to bet into one-way markets. I know what you're thinking. What the hell's a one-way market? It's a great question. Thanks for asking. Examples are anytime touchdown scores in the NFL, 
first basket scores in the NBA, home runs in MLB, and anytime goal scores in NHL. In these markets, at most retail books, you can only bet one side. What I mean by that is, you can't bet a guy to not score a touchdown. Or in hockey, you can't bet a guy to not score a goal. It should be noted, at some books, you can bet a guy to not score a touchdown or to not hit a home run, but those are not examples of one-way markets because there's obviously two sides. So don't worry about those books for right now. The reason sports books will like you more for betting into one-way markets is because they can set whatever number they want. That's why the market width on these things are huge. They would be forced to post on honest lines because having an opposite side to bet would kind of force their hand a little, but since there is an opposite side, they can literally make up any number they want. Now obviously we can trust these sports books to do the right thing and give us fair odds, but I'm just saying, if they wanted to, they could just give us whatever they want, which is why betting into these one-way markets makes them like us a little bit better. Pro tip, if you really want to get in good with these sports books, maybe even get invited to one of their physical locations, you can parlay these one-way markets. Books love that. Look at this thing. We could turn $100 into almost 8 k by getting just three goal scores correct. Now obviously math tells us that we should be getting much better odds on all three of these guys, but whatever. That's not the point. These types of bets help us look like the kind of customer sports books like. Definitely not the kind that gets limited. Another classic win-win situation. Finally, SGPs are the third way to get sports books to love you. What's an SGP? SGP stands for Same Game Parlay. Obviously, this is a type of parlay, but the reason I didn't include it in the parlay section of this video is because it's a different kind of parlay altogether. SGPs are pretty new, and it's obvious that the sportsbooks love them since they get pushed way harder than any other type of bet. Log into your account right now. I bet there's some sort of SGP bonus in there right now. It's actually kind of crazy how hard they push these things. It doesn't even matter what the sport is either. If there's a game, there's likely a way that we can make an SGP. The fun part of these things is the fact that we can tell ourselves that they have value because of correlation. The issue is the books know what correlation is, so they price these things accordingly. What do I mean by correlation? In football terms, let's say that you think a quarterback is gonna go over his passing yards. If that's the case, then someone has to catch those balls and accrue those receiving yards. So for an example like that, you would try to find a receiver to pair that quarterback with. Because if the quarterback goes over, then the receiver will probably go over. Now obviously, if we know about correlation, then the books do too. That's why they price it absurdly and then push same game parlays on all the newbies. It's a dirty game, but it's one that we're always gonna play. Even if we get limited, we're gamblers. What I suggest doing is taking the books up on these SGP bonuses, even though we know that the books are trying to bend us over. We just have to look the part when we hit up these books and betting SGPs is a great way to do it. But keep in mind, at some point, limits are gonna hit. We're winners, winners get limited. We already talked about that. But by betting some parlays, SGPs, and one-way markets, we can throw the books off our scent for a little while. I like to think of it as giving a little bit back, like throw the small fish back just so you can catch the bigger fish later. I don't even know if that makes sense, but I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.